The plane, when not in use by the team, is leased for chartered flights by Philadelphia-based Eastern Airlines, James said. It's great to be associated with positive missions to deliver vaccines where they're needed, said James. But this wasn't a political mission. As part of its vaccine diplomacy, China has pledged roughly half a billion doses of its vaccines to more than 45 countries, according to an Associated Press tally. And just four of China's many vaccine makers claim they are able to produce at least 2.6 billion doses this year. U.S. health officials haven't certified the Chinese vaccines as effective, and Secretary of State Antony Blinken has complained about China's politicization of its vaccine sales and donations. Meanwhile Democrats and Republicans alike have harshly criticized China's human rights record, predatory trade practices and digital surveillance as a deterrent to closer ties. But many in the developing world struggling to inoculate their populations have little tolerance for the bad thing of China and accuse the U.S. of hoarding Western-made shots. President Joe Biden on Monday pledged to share an additional 20 million vaccine doses of its own stocks in the coming six weeks, bringing the total U.S. commitment abroad to 80 million. Countries in Latin America are also grateful for Chinese investment in major infrastructure projects and purchasing of the region's commodities amid the pandemic-induced recession. Also this week, El Salvador's Congress, which is dominated by Bukel's allies, ratified a cooperation agreement with China that calls for 400 million yuan, about $60 million, in investment in a water purification plant, a stadium and a library among other projects. The agreement was the outgrowth of the previous Salvadoran government's severing of diplomatic relations with Taiwan in 2018 and establishment of ties with communist Beijing. The Biden administration should stop giving Latin American policymakers public advice vis-a-vis -vis China, said Oliver Stuenkel, an international affairs professor at the Getulio Vargas Foundation in Sao Paulo, Brazil, speaking to the congressional advisory panel. It sounds arrogant and dishonest given the many positive economic consequences trade with China has had in Latin America.